Good morning. Amen. And there we go. Good morning. Good morning. So good to see all of you in sanctuary this morning. If you are visiting with us this morning, would you just wave your hands at me? Okay. If you are not an official member of the El Bethel Church, the members keep trying to catch me slipping. Amen. Good morning to you. So good to see you in worship with us this morning. To all who are visiting with us in sanctuary and in the virtual sanctuary. I am Pastor Natalie Rhodes, one of the three junior pastors here at the Bethel Church, where our senior pastor is the Reverend Dr. Lawrence C. Glass, Jr. Amen. Amen. Hard to believe we are already in the fourth month of this year. Amen. We had an awesome time this morning in prayer. So the sanctuary has been saturated in prayer. So I'm excited about worship this morning. Amen. I have the privilege of sharing our announcements for this Sunday, April the 7th. Happy birthday to all of those who are celebrating birthdays in April. If you're celebrating a birthday, just wave at me. Happy birthday to all these beautiful April babies. Amen. And then to those who jumped the broom, who said, I do. If you're celebrating a wedding anniversary in the month of April, Sister Karen and Kevin, amen, amen. Sister Carolyn, amen, sister, amen. Happy anniversary. Y'all said I do and you keep saying I do every day. Amen and hallelujah. <laughs> this coming Saturday, if you're wondering or if you've ever wondered if a loved one has dementia and you want to better understand the disease cycle or you're thinking about whether or not you need to take a loved one to a specialist for assessment. We are going to have a lunch and learn workshop this coming Saturday, April the 13th to give you some information and to provide some answers to some of the more commonly asked questions about dementia. Amen. That is a very wide umbrella and there are various things underneath that umbrella. So we want to be informed. Amen. The workshop is going to be held here at the El Bethel Church during our free, somebody say free 99. free 99. Amen. We love free stuff. Our free lunch and learn session again this coming Saturday, April the 13th from 11 to 1. And our presenter is going to be Dr. Paula Duran from the Universal Dementia Caregivers Organization. Registration is requested. If you are planning to attend, I'm going to ask that you would see Sister Victoria Adams for additional details. If you have even a piece of paper, because oftentimes we run up to people and say, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm going to be there. Please just do me a courtesy, even if it's just a little slip of paper that you can find, write your name on it and put April 13th workshop so that she knows that you are planning on attending. Amen? Amen. The Esther will host our fellowship event on also Saturday, April the 13th. Cupcakes and Conversations. Please contact Sister Vicki Griffin, Linda Lovelady, 
or Rita's screws. I don't happen to um, see them in sanctuary just yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Sister Vicki Griffin, wave at the people. Amen. One of our beautiful ushers. And si okay, so what y'all really telling me, Sister Vicki and Sister Linda, is that I'm having trouble with my glasses today because I miss both of y'all. Amen. I apologize. They are both in sanctuary. So you can see either of them. For more information about Cupcakes and Conversation, that is going to be this coming Saturday as well from two to four. Our church anniversary. We are in our anniversary month, marking 84 years since the El Bethel Church was established. And additionally, we are celebrating and commemorating 20 years since being in this current building. Amen, that's something to praise God about, amen. To have a church here for 84 years and 20 years in this building. Our assessments are as follows for adults, $125, young adults 18 through 25, $25, teenagers 13 through 17, $12.50, and our children 0 to 12 years, $2.50. Amen. And to celebrate, one of the events we're going to have is a chili cook-off. A chili cook-off. I, I forget who had it, the, who won the trophy the last time. The men's ministry, right? Amen. So they, they've got bragging rights to that. So who will win the trophy this year? Our annual chili cook-off is going to be the third Sunday immediately following service in all ministries are asked to enter, amen. Prayerfully, y'all know how to cook chili and it tastes good, amen. Oh, somebody ought to say amen about that because all, you've heard the saying, all money ain't good money, all chili ain't good chili. How about, <laughs> how about that? <laughs> you can see uh, Sister Carolyn Binion or uh, Mother Thelma Jennings for additional details. We've got a busy schedule. On May the 11th, the Matriarch Ministry is sponsoring a hat and tie tea. That, again, that's Saturday, May the 11th from 2 to 5 p.m. It's going to be an afternoon of fun. And you need to see a member of the Matriarch Ministry for tickets. I believe those tickets are $20. Amen. So the Matriarch Ministry, y'all just wave your hands so folks can see who you are. Amen. I'm not going to call all the names because I told y'all before my glasses weren't working that well. Amen. Did you come to worship this morning? We had a great time in prayer this morning from 645 to 745. And part of our reasonable service is giving. Amen, somebody. Giving is worship because we give to God not because of only what he's done. He's been good. He's been kind. He's been merciful. Oh, come on, y'all. Can I get a witness? We prepare in our hearts and our minds for worship. God has been good. He is good. God has been kind. He's been merciful. He's been loving. He's been forgiving. Hallelujah. He's watched over us all week. Amen. We thank God for not only what he's done, but for who he is. He's an awesome God. He's an amazing God. He's a wonderful God. Amen, somebody. Nobody like our God. The Lord God of Israel is one, and beside him there is no other. So we bless and thank God. And part of our worship is giving. Amen. I've said it before, I'll say it again today. God will not ask that from us, which he has not already given to us to provide for us that we may be a blessing to him and to others. Amen? Amen. We have various ways to give. You can give through Cash App, Zelle, Givelify, or you can give on the website, or you can bring it in person in 
send it to one, give it to one of the trustees of the day. I'm not sure who that is, but they will be out in the corridor. I believe I saw Brother Angelo out there earlier. Amen. I'm excited about what God is going to do today. That's all I have for announcements. I'm going to ask that our deacons would come up and lead us in our scripture and prayer for today. Amen. Sunday of April. God's been good to us. Amen. I'm Deacon Randall. I'm going to read our scripture. Deacon Adams is going to lead us to the throne of grace. And we're going to go on a little further. Amen. Out of John, the 20th chapter, the uh, 30th and 31st verse reads as follows. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. The Lord's word has already been blessed, Deacon Adams. God, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for Jesus who died that we might have a right to the tree of life. God, we thank you for our church. We thank you for our homes and family. We thank you, Lord, for everything you have done for us from the early existence of our lives until this present moment. Lord, you've been so good to us, and you've been so kind. You left us here on this side of the grave where prayers can be heard and mercy can be found. As we come, Lord, we ask in you to create in all of us clean hearts and renew in us right spirits. We ask in you to bless our service today when the message is given let somebody come crying i once was lost but now i'm found i was blind but now i see father we ask in you to bless our pastor and his wife bless them father go with them father and stand by them we ask in you father to Look out for our children as they travel through these dangerous streets. Go before them as a leading light, Father, and on behind them as a strong, protecting angel. Shield and guide them from all that is hurt, harm, and danger. Father, I know I haven't always did the right thing, but bless me, Father. Keep me in your care, Father. Bless me, Father. Bless this service. When the message is given, let somebody come crying, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. And when we have prayed our last prayer and sang our last song, give us a home in your kingdom where we could praise your name forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, somebody, put your hands together. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time, we come to bless the name of the Lord. Give him the highest praise. Hallelujah.
Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Hallelujah. So we came with a praise this morning. We came with a thank you this morning. We came with a Lord, I bless you. Lord, I adore you. Lord, I exalt you. Lord, I give you all the praise. Come on and clap your hands right there and just bless him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We honor you, God. We honor you. We honor you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your kindness. We just bless your name. Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for that shedding of blood, that remission of our sins. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blood
testimony today? Did he have to reach way down? How far did he have to go? I don't know how far he had to go for you, but I was in the church and still in the world. I had one foot in the church and one foot in the world. But God and his blood, he had to reach way down. He had to reach way down. I might look like I've been saved all my life. I've been in the church all my life, but I haven't always been saved. So I know what it's like to come to church on Sunday and do all kinds of hell Monday through Saturday. But I met a man named Jesus. Oh my. And he looked at me and said, guess what? I made an investment in you. And I'm going to get a return on my investment. I did not save you for nothing, but I saved you to be a woman of God. And I saved you to sing my praises. And I saved you to preach my word. So it don't matter what you did. It don't matter what you're doing. It matters that I already paid the price. It matters that my blood has already been shed. It matters that no matter what you do, and no matter where you go, and no matter who comes, and no matter who goes, I've already been to you. I've already saved you. I've already made the way. I've already. So good to see you today. It's been a long time. But even though I didn't see you, I was praying for you. And I kept asking about you. Where's Deacon Davenport? And I see you here today. And I don't know what your struggle has been. And I don't need to know. What I do know is that there is power in the blood. There is power in the blood of Jesus. So what I want to do right now is just thank God for the work that's already being done. What I want to do right now is praise God for how he's already healed you. What I want to do right now is give God the glory because what he's done on your body He's going to finish the work. He's going to perfect everything that concerns you. And so Jesus already said, by his stripes, by his stripes, by his stripes, by his stripes, I'm going to praise God for your divine healing, for a miracle right now. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think it's according to the power that's at work in us so if anybody in here got some power like i've got some power i want you to give god a praise along with me so that we can see the manifestation of the miracle working power of our god in the life of our brother deacon davenport can I get some praise right now? Can somebody praise him?
out in advance. See, when I wasn't praising God, I was worried about what might happen. When I wasn't praising God, I was having anxious thoughts about what might happen. When I wasn't praising God, I was going over scenarios in my head of coulda, woulda, and shoulda. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and I think about what he's already done, when I think about what he's already done, how he already healed me, how he already saved me, how he already delivered me. So now I just praise him anyhow. Because guess what? If he doesn't do it, he's still alive. I gotta get it out. I gotta praise. Come on, y'all. I gotta praise. I gotta praise and I gotta let it out. I gotta praise. I gotta praise. I gotta praise. Get your praise out. Don't let this moment pass you by. God has been awesome. I gotta pray. Now is your chance to praise God. Now is your chance to worship God? Did you come with a praise on your lips this morning? A hallelujah, a thank you Jesus, a God you've been real good to me. Our God is miraculous. Our God is awesome. Our God is magnificent. There's nobody like our God. There's nobody like our God. There's nobody like our God. To whom could we compare him? There's no Look to your neighbor to the left or to the right. You're looking at a miracle. Look at what God has done. Look at what God has done. Look at what God is doing. Look at what God has done. Hallelujah. 
God is so awesome. God is so wonderful. God is miraculous. He's marvelous. He's altogether lovely. The Lord God of Israel is one. There is none other like him. He has no equal. That's our God. Nobody like our God. We came today to worship God in spirit and in truth, and we're doing that. God is awesome. God is awesome. I could throw this mic out and anybody could catch it. And you could say, God is awesome. God has kept me. God has lifted me. God has saved me. God has redeemed me. When other folks have thrown me away, God stepped in. That's the God we serve. God is so awesome. Don't miss this moment to tell God how much he means to you. Don't miss this moment to tell God, God, I love you more than anything, more than my parents, more than my children, more than my significant other. Because his loving kindness has been better than life to us, it's because of his mercies that we're not consumed. God has been awesome to us. Don't miss this moment. Don't let this moment pass you by. As we're preparing for communion, what better time to honor and reverence the presence of God in this place? He is here. I'm so glad that God dwells here. He is here to meet every need to meet every need. That's the kind of God we serve. Nobody like our dad. Nobody like our father. Each first Sunday, we reverence and honor the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with communion. Has everyone in the sanctuary been served? You have your communion. If you do not have a communion cup, would you please raise your hand so that you may receive one? We observe the sacrament because Jesus Christ gave his life. He said, not my will, Father, but your will be done. What better example of love than to lay your life down willingly for someone? As we still ourselves and prepare our hearts for communion, let us pray. Our Father and our God, we come to you in this moment, in this holy moment, in this reverent moment, God asking you to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness that we would be right before you before we partake of this communion. God, we ask according to your word that you would forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, oh God, so that we could be in right relationship with you. We thank you, God, that you see us through the eyes of your son, Jesus Christ, who hung, bled, and died for us and is one day coming back for us. God, I ask that you would bless this communion and all those who partake of it, oh God as we honor your body and your blood, Lord Jesus. Be with us in this moment as we reminisce on what you did for us so that we could live eternally with you, not bound by sin or the penalty of sin. Hallelujah, you came to set us free and he whom the Son has set free is free indeed. So God, we thank you for this communion and we thank you for this moment. It's in Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen as we prepare to partake communion.
with the wafer in one hand and the cup in the other, would you please recite these words with me? In obedience to the word of God, in honor to the Son of God, in fellowship with the saints of God, we remember his first coming, we anticipate his second coming, we celebrate his presence here with this communion on purpose. Let us eat together. Let us drink together. There will be someone collecting the empties in your row. What a sweet spirit in this place today. I'm excited about what God is gonna say to us today. Are you excited? Amen. We've had an awesome time of prayer, praise and worship, preparing our hearts for what thus saith the Lord. And today we have sharing with us one of our junior pastors in the person of Pastor Darrell Campbell Jr., also known as Pastor Red, amen? He is so gifted, he is so talented, he is a busy man. I bless and thank God for him and some of the conversations that we've had. God has truly spoken through him and poured into my life. So for that, I am eternally grateful. El Bethel, you know we have an awesome pastor and he's an awesome preacher and teacher. You know how we do. We are not suffering for good preaching. And I'm excited about what the Lord is going to say through my brother on today. So I'm going to ask that you would help me charge him in this moment as you extend your, head, your hand to him. And repeat these words with me. Pastor Red, we love you. Pastor Red, we need you to preach the word of the Lord. Amen. Give a good God bless you as he comes. Pastor Darrell Campbell Jr. a.k.a. Pastor Red. Amen. Amen. Let's acknowledge our pastor in his absence. Man, I love that dude. I love that dude. Honored to be uh, presenting the word today. Y'all look as excited as I am. All right. I don't know if y'all look excited or surprised. Like, it's kind of the same face, right? <laughs> like, he preaching? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Let's pray. God, we love you. We feel your spirit here, God. We thank you for that, God. Thank you for meeting us here, God. Thank you for your will being done. God, thank you for even shifting the things that we thought we were going to be doing right now so that you could speak through us right now, God. You could speak through us. You could speak to us, God. God, we, we love you and we thank you for this moment. God, I ask that you be with me right now. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, God. God, I want what you want. Speak your words right now, God. So cleanse me right now, God. Remove everything that you don't want. Remove every word you don't want. Remove every line that you don't want, God. And let your word go forth, God. We ask that our minds and our hearts and our ears be open right now to hear what it is that you have for us right now, God. So that we can take it with us and be who you want us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. 
All right. Hey, y'all. I learned to, um, well, I'm learning to take my time. Um, Because first of all, y'all ain't going nowhere. (laughs) And second of all, like, I spent a lot of time in preparation, which is a good and bad thing, because, like, I know the end already. And because I love y'all so much, I just want to jump straight to the end and, like, y'all, here go the thing right here. This is what I was trying to tell y'all. That I, like, sometimes I'll be skipping pages because I just, like, I just love y'all. Like, I just want to give y'all what it is that God gave me to give to y'all. And sometimes I just, like, skip stuff. So I'm, like, I'm learning how to, like, just chill. (laughs) Take my time. Because y'all ain't going nowhere. (laughs) And we early. Y'all know I don't even talk long. Raise your hand if you've ever talked to me on the phone. It's going to be, like, four people. (laughs) Because I don't even answer the phone. <laughs> I don't. I'm like, don't my voicemail say if you want to talk to me now, text me or something like that? Yeah, it's like, why would you call me? I don't get it. But I'm here if you need me. <laughs> John chapter 20. I'm keeping this part short because I know y'all like to stand when people are reading the words. So I'm going to go through the whole chapter, but I won't make you stand through the whole chapter. So I'm only going to read two verses. And then we're going to like step right through this, okay? So John chapter 20, verse 30 and 31, verses 31, 30 and 31. And this is from the message version. It says, Jesus provided far more God-revealing signs that are, than are written in the book. These are written down so you will believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And in the act of believing, have real and eternal life in the way he personally revealed it. So I want y'all to turn to like somebody. We do the whole turn to things. Don't turn to somebody thing. Say, now what? And then turn to the other person because that's the person you really wanted to talk to. Say, now what? And then everybody turn to Malik so that he don't have to say nothing else for the rest of the sermon. Y'all just turn to Malik. Say, now what? <laughs> now what? <laughs> Now what? All right, everybody sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Now what? Now what? He going to a whole different so that. That was years ago. Now what is what we're on today? March Madness. Now, y'all know, I mean, if y'all don't know, I'm like a sports head. Like, if I was not playing music, I would be a football. Not a football player, I'd be a football. Because, like... I love football, so I would literally be a football, okay? So if I wasn't doing music, I'd be a football. But the next closest thing is basketball. My son loves basketball, so we do the basketball thing. March Madness, even though it's April, it's still called March Madness, which is weird to me. But we're down to two teams, all right? And if you filled out a bracket and you anything like me, yours was messed up when Oakland beat Kentucky. <laughs> even though we're from Michigan, nobody expected Oakland to beat Kentucky. Yale beat Auburn. And it was all kind of jokes going around like, guess like you was getting ready to get ready for the NBA and then you got beat by a dentist. Like, Yale beat Auburn and James Madison beat Wisconsin. And you like, now what? Like, now what? What do you do like if you prepare to win and then like you don't and then now what? You got a bus, you had jerseys, the cheerleaders came out, like all of that like, now what? Because we was expecting to go to the Final Four. We got beat by James Madison. Where is that? <laughs> like, how? All right, so, so, so even if you think of the winning team, though. So what we celebrated last week was called basically the Christian Super Bowl. It was, Easter is like, that's the whole reason why we do everything. So then now what? Like, we did that. Now what? Like, what's supposed to happen now? It was a whole resurrection, tomb thing, Mary, anointed. That, that, that. Now what? People had, like, suits and stuff. We all wore purple. Everybody had the Easter suit laid out. Who had a suit laid out for the week after Easter? Nobody. Malik. <laughs> Malik. <laughs> 
now what? What's next? So last week we, we observed our, uh, the resurrection of Christ, and now what? What's next? There are people that even argue that what we celebrated last week is just a pagan holiday. Or that we celebrated on the wrong calendar day. Or the details of how we celebrate it are improper. Okay, but we studied last week, 1 Corinthians 15, 14 says, and if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is our faith. Yeah. Thus meaning that if we don't believe in that, then everything that we do is irrelevant. Jesus thought so much of us that he'd rather die than us live in sin. That's the most, that, that is, that thought, that he'd rather die than for us to be accountable for our own sins. Okay, so if not understanding nor believing that, questioning dates or theology shows that Jesus reversed the curse by being crucified on a tree, which was basically the first thing that we ever did was taking stuff off of a tree. And so he reversed that whole curse just by that. The first thing that we ever did was, what was that? To take the apple, the fruit off the tree was the first thing that we ever did wrong. Okay, so he thought so much that even he put back what we stole, undoing every wrong that we ever chose. Then you have to at least acknowledge this. Even if you don't believe that, even if you don't, just say, if, even if you don't, say, even if you don't, even if you don't, you believe that today is April 7th, the fourth month, seventh day, 2024 years after what? So you at least acknowledge what the date is. So you, we got a basis that we all believe that. You believe that today is today. You believe that today is 2024 years after what? After death. So we at least have a basis of what we believe in. And that's where we're going to start our conversation. We at least believe that, right? So I started at Calvary so we at least agree on the starting point. So even if the details are off, we believe the date. We believe it happened. Because if you didn't, you just wouldn't know the date. They say, meet me on Tuesday. And it's like, what's a Tuesday? It is what it is, right? So now that we got that basis out, like nobody, we, we already realized that this is the week after. So literally, what's next? I believe that God brought us all here, right here, here to show us this. Going back to the very first verse of John chapter 20. It says, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So I would speculate that the reason that Mary left the tomb and ran to them is because she didn't even know what to do. She like, now what? I done went to this tomb. I had oils. It's early in the morning. And I went to see Jesus and he not even there. Now what? Mark 16, 1 through 4 says, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, the Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might anoint Jesus' body. So that means that she had a plan on what to do that day. There were spices, there, were, there was a, a whole protocol on what to do before. There was a whole protocol. She had a plan on what to do for the day, but now that the body isn't there, she's like, now what? There's not even a body in the tomb. So she runs to Peter. They had protocol on what to do before the crucifixion. They had oils for entombment. But now that the rock that you expected to be there isn't there, what are you going to do? That just went over your head because the rock that you expected to see there that you had to move isn't there anymore. Or the thing that you thought was going to be an obstacle isn't there anymore. What are you going to do? You thought that you was going to have to move a rock and all that. Like, Matthew 28, 2 says, There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone, and sat on it. So now the rock that you thought was in place has been shaken, but not completely taken out of the way. It was just moved. And an angel sat on it. The thing that you thought that you had to get rid of just moved, and the angel sat on it. 
That is not my point, so I'm going to keep moving, but I think you got something out of that. Okay. Jesus performs this miracle without disturbing the things that you thought were going to be there. Your protocol is set up. It's still intact. He ascended without disrupting any of that. To clarify now, the tomb is a physical setup to bury what it is that you killed. The tomb now is a physical setup to bury what it is that you killed. The things that you once lived on, that you depended on, still here, but moved out of the way. Your personality is still intact. All that stuff that you got going on is still there. It's just moved. And there's an angel sitting on it now, getting ready to show you what's up. It's now a rearranged setup, and it's not a grave anymore. Now it's a stage. It's a stage and a setup for a miracle, y'all. Maybe some things that you thought were dead need to be rearranged and moved. And let the angel sit on it so he can show you what's up. I wish I had a better way to say to show you what's up, but that's all I got. I'm still me, but he's going to show you what's up. Man. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and they said, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they put him. We don't even know where they put him, suggest that Mary didn't know what to do. Eventually, Jesus literally told them the whole rundown and plan was going on, but they're still confused. Like, Jesus literally said, I'm going to come back. I'm going to be resurrected. But still, when you got to the tomb, she was still confused. Somebody that's really close to Jesus is confused. Put a pin there because we're going to get to that. Somebody who's really close to Jesus is confused when he does what he said he was going to do. Somebody that's really close to Jesus is confused when they told him, okay. Mark 9, 30 through 32 uh, says, he said to them, the son of man is going to be portrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him. After three days, he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. Verse 3 in that same uh, John chapter 20. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb. This is a red thing, because like when I read the Bible, I'm like, why would you even write that? I mean, I guess John had his sandals in sport mode. And so he was like, <laughs> no, you didn't get it, because Crocs in sport mode. <laughs> he outran Peter to the tomb. No, that wasn't funny. <laughs> OK. He bent over and looked at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth is still lying there in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had raised from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. He did all of that. All of that running and made it to the scene of the tomb just to go back to where they were staying. Because they didn't even do anything when they got there. They just looked around. Remember, their sandals were in sport mode. <laughs> running, 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 running to the tomb. Got there, looked at everything, and went back home. Did nothing. Still didn't ask no questions. Didn't ask nobody. Didn't ask Mary nothing. Didn't do anything. They just went back home. There are some people who are concerned, but not completely committed. Like, enough to be here, see what's going on, run here if you have to, look around, and then go right back home. I wouldn't be a disciple with my sandals in sport mode, run into the tomb, and then just go back home. 
How many times have you been one of the disciples running the church, looking around, and then just go right back home? What is the point of that? All of that detail, all of that running around. I see the strips. I see the linen. I'm confused. Okay. I'm interested in what's going on. There's a whole Bible reading plan at that church. They said this. They read that. They sang this. Okay. I'm going to just go back home. What is the point of that? Interested, but not completely invested. Concerned and curious, but not committed. I'm urging that you at least stay connected enough to figure out what to do next. Because there's something for all of us to do next. You want to learn what it is? You want to learn? Say, you want to learn what it is? What now? What's next? Ask me what's next. I'll tell you because I read about it. It's a cool thing. Thanks for asking. Be, I think that if they would have stayed, they would have had the same encounter that Mary had next. Now, Mary stood outside the tomb crying, and she wept. She bent over and looked at the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where, their, where, where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, they, she said. This is how you read stories. They're taking my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they put him. At this, she turned and saw Jesus standing there. Wow. Had they stayed, they might have saw Jesus standing there. Wow. Had you stayed, you might have saw Jesus standing there. If had you asked a couple of questions about something, you might have saw Jesus standing there. Yeah. But instead, you went home. Wow. Wow. But she didn't even realize it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was a gardener, she said, sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you put him, and I'll go get him. So at least she's like, I'm here to do something. I'm going to do something. Just tell me where you put him. I'm going to do something. I don't know how to spell something, but she'll do something. I'm interested to see how that's going to look on Facebook because, you know, they do the subtitles. Something. Okay. <laughs> something. I'm going to do something. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, 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 which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have ascended to the Father. Go instead and tell, uh, go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascended to my father and your father, to my God and your God. So this is what's next. Go tell people what you saw. Like, literally. That's what's next. It's for you to go and tell people what you saw. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she said, uh, and she told them that he had said these things to her. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Everything started happening now because she did what he said do. Go tell people what you saw. That's what you do next. That's the first point. Go tell people what you saw. There wasn't even a whole lot of detail. They said, what, what was he wearing? What did, what did he look like? How tall was he? What did he do? What did, what did... Just tell people what you saw. I saw Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because the next thing that happened was Jesus appears to them. Okay. Because of what's taking place, they've locked themselves uh, in uh, out of what they expected to happen was that people were going to come and kill them. Check this out. The disciples went to a place and locked the doors because of fear for the Jews. They thought that the Jews were going to come and kill them. What made them think that? Because at the last crucifixion, that's what happened. No, there's never been a crucifixion. There's never been a resurrection. There's been a crucifixion, but there's never been a resurrected Christ. So the things that they think are about to happen are their own speculation. 
Is there really a law that says you can't steal bodies from the, like, th this didn't happen. There was not a resurrection before this for them to say, you know what, last time there was a resurrection, then we got killed for the people that, no, it didn't happen. So they went and locked themselves in a room and said, you know what, they might come kill us because of what they thought. Our own thoughts sometimes are getting our own way. Like, who told you to go in a room and lock the door? Who told you that the things that you knew now needed to be locked away? The, the, the mission that you have in life needs to be locked in a, in a room. You are the disciples of Jesus Christ. If nothing else, you saw the tomb. And then you ran to your house and then you locked the door. Why do we take our experiences with Christ and lock them away in a place because we think that somebody else is going to crucify us for it? I believe that many of us are here because we believe something. We might not know all of the details. Remember, we say it, it and nothing else, we know the date. We believe something. We're, if, even if we're just curious for the moment, God has for us to do something, and that what next is what we do now. Allow your experience with Christ to reshape what it is that you do next. You might be the first person in your family, or the first person in your circle, or the first person on your block. Like, let's just keep it real. You might be the first person on your block that believes this. But don't lock it away in a room. The crazy thing is, even if you do, you believe this. You got this now. Even if you do lock it in a room, what did Jesus do next? He popped up in the room. <laughs> even if you lock what you know and what you believe in a room, Jesus is invading that too, but gently, because he just appears, just shows up. Jesus came and stung, stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. So now Jesus now is showing us what to do next. Recognize that he told Mary what to do. Go. Tell people what you saw. Go make disciples by telling everyone what you experienced here. With this charge, the disciples now become apostles, which literally just means sent. Sent. Apostles just mean sent. Okay? Disciples are those people who believe. Because they started making a bunch of disciples. There were millions of disciples after that. But these are the apostles who are sent. Okay? Matthew 28, 19 says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. There are many, many disciples. Acts 6, 1 says the number of disciples were increasing. So disciples are a believer. Apostles are sent. Right? So now you are going to allow your experience with God to reshape you. Time changed. Yeah. Even as a person who believes in the conspiracy of dates, fact still remains. It happened. Flat out. It happened. The tomb became a miracle scene. Notice that everyone to this point was changed instantly. The guards, who we haven't talked about yet, were terrified. Many noticed that uh, Mary noticed and was excited. She was excited enough to go get Peter and John. Yeah? Everyone everywhere was changed. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the 12. Thomas, also known as Didymus, which I may or nope. Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. So the disciples went out and did what they were supposed to. They just told people what they saw. They told Thomas what he saw, right? But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, 
I will not believe. This if then statement has a lot of, for me, I'm just say for me, a lot of belief in it. Because if he had not believed it happened, he's given a lot of details about something that didn't happen. Like, how you know with nails in his hands? How you know where you want to put your hands? So even when people talk to me about oh, this conspiracy, this and this and this and this, it's like, but you are basing this on a lot of truth. You believe something. Okay, that's not my point there. It's amazing that Thomas insisted on not believing that Jesus was raised from the dead when he was one of the people that saw Jesus raised Nazareth from the dead. So if nothing else, you know people can be raised from the dead. You saw Jesus do it. Why do you think he can't do it himself? It's okay. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with him, though the doors were locked. Like, here you are locking the door like, you know Jesus can get through that, right? <laughs> What's the point of doing that when you already know Jesus can get through it? So we already understand that we recognize who Jesus is. We accept him, like, and you can't hide stuff from him. Okay, all right. But the doors were locked again. Jesus came and stood among them. That has to be hilarious to me. Like, Jesus on the outside of it, like, <laughs> door locked. <laughs> And Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Thomas told the other apostles what he needed. When did he tell Jesus? He told the other apostles, I need to see his hands, I need to see his side, I need to see that. He never told Jesus. But Jesus responds to him directly. We are telling other people what we need. We tell in our inner circle, and Jesus is talking right back to us. Because he keeps invading all the stuff that you think is private. Thomas didn't talk to Jesus. He talked to the dudes. And then Jesus came back and said, I know what you told them dudes. I know what you told them. Even though you told them, come do it. Come touch don't be afraid to even let your doubt lead you to evidence that compels you. Don't be afraid to let your doubt lead you to evidence that compels you. Take your doubt to the right people. Don't be afraid to say it out loud to faith-based believers and followers. Those people will keep you in the right place for you to receive what you need. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Here's the thing with GPS, because that's basically GPS, the way, the truth, and the life. He's not just the way. He's not just the truth. But if you take just one part of the GPS, you end up somewhere, but not where you plan to be going. There are a lot of people who just take Jesus as being the truth, but not the way and the life. So if you take part of the GPS, you end up somewhere different, but not where you're destined to be. If you take just a part of the GPS in the directions, you end up somewhere, but not where you're supposed to be. What if you just take two parts of the GPS directions and say, turn left, turn left. You end up on Grand River, but not home. So if you take all of the directions of what Jesus is, the way, the truth, and the life, then it leads to truth that leads to life. The truth is based on a resurrection that happened. Yes, 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 yes. So what's happening is that people keep taking these parts of directions and ending up different, but not destined. 
Matthew 28 says that the guards took this information to the wrong people. They also ran. The guards saw the same thing that they saw. They got to the tomb, looked around, ain't no Jesus here, but then ran to the wrong people. And then they got offered money, and they made up a story of what happened to Jesus. Matthew 28, 11 says, while the women were on the way, some of the guards went into the city and reported this to the chief priests, everything that happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole them away while you were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him too and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. So they took the same information to the wrong people and got something completely different. What's happening is we're taking the same information here to the wrong people and ending up with the wrong results because it's the wrong people. They gave them money and made up a story. Jesus has now transcended every limitation that makes sense to you. Every single limitation. When he's alive, he teaches beyond our understanding. In death, he rises. He physically shows up in rooms that you locked. He speaks, responds, and shows up directly to the doubt that you tell to other people. So what are you supposed to do next? Go tell everybody what you saw. Not even fully explaining everything that you saw. What you liked, what you want. Jesus literally does the rest. You just do that. Go tell people what you saw. What Jesus did goes beyond everything you created. So you don't have enough knowledge to even answer all the questions. It goes beyond everything that you created. It goes beyond a tomb. It goes beyond a rock. It goes beyond a room. It goes beyond everything that you understood. So now I kind of understand why they saw all that stuff and just went back home. It's like, it's a tomb, it's a, some cloth. It's, and the cloth was neatly put back. Okay, so have you ever seen like the mummy or something like that and they got the stuff that was wrapped around. Okay, imagine that that mummified person stuff is taken off of them and then put back neatly. So even if a man had come and stolen the body of Jesus, how would they have gotten the wraps off of him without cutting them? It can't happen. This obviously has to be the work of the Lord. It goes beyond every bit of understanding that we have. A tomb and a lock and a doubt, when people go and tell uh, what he did, he connects the dots. You don't have to understand everything. Just go and share what you experienced. And what you experienced today here is real. What you have experienced today here is real. Go share that. Just that little bit. Man, I went to that church, man. They sang this song. I felt this, and that was it. Why did you feel that? I'm going to go back and figure it out next week. I, I just go figure it out next week. Jesus will tell me. He connect the dots. Notice that Mary, who had a close relationship with Jesus, I told y'all to put a pin in that, didn't even know what to do. She ran to Peter. Don't worry or compare yourself to people who have been here in church for their whole lives. Since they don't know what to do, then I don't know what to do. Nope, that's wrong. None of us know. We've been here our whole lives. We don't have a clue. We're not smart enough to know. You just share what you experienced. This shook and reshaped everybody. And this is a bonus point for me. Man, this man, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be. Okay. This hit me. 27 and 28 says, then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand, and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord, my God. Remember, Thomas said to the other disciples, I need to see the nails in his hand. I need to see that. Jesus responded, go ahead, put your hands here. Go ahead and do this. When did Thomas ever do it? He never even touched him. 
just at the thought that God knew what he needed, he said, you know what? I'm changed. Thomas didn't even touch him. He didn't put his hands there. He didn't touch his side. It's just the fact that Jesus knew what he needed changed his life. He didn't say Thomas reached out his hand. Jesus said, come on, you can do it. Come on, come on. Touch me right here. Touch me right here. Thomas said, wow. Thomas never even touched him, y'all. He believed at just the thought that Jesus knew what he needed. Which leads us back to this. I usually send the band a text to know when they come back. Y'all can come back now. <laughs> I usually be sitting right there and I'm like, he wrapping up so y'all can come back. Hey, band, y'all can come back now. <laughs> All right, <laughs> give it up for the band. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. No, BT, okay. <laughs> no. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. What's next? All of this happened just for you to believe. Just for you to believe. So that you can share what you experience. Go tell people what you experience here and let God connect the rest of the dots. That's what's next. That's what we do now. It's incredible that we serve a God that knows exactly what we need. This tells me that God has heard my heart. He's heard your mind. He heard the things that you won't say out loud. And he wants to respond to them right now. We serve a God who's heard your heart. Who knows what it is that you need. Is not even expecting you to turn around and touch him back. He just said, believe me. Believe that you can do this. I want to pray for y'all right now. I want to pray that you have the boldness to do what's required next. Let the experience that you feel with God, the experience that you know of God, reshape you. Let it move you forward. Not what you think. Not the questions that other people have. Not even your own shackles of putting you in a room and sharing and, and, and trying to keep things in a room because you're scared of what's going to happen next. God, we love you and we thank you, God. We thank you that you're a God that transcends above everything that we know. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins, God. Thank you for thinking enough of us to answer what it is that we needed, God. To be strategic enough to do everything in purpose and perfectness, God. You are perfect, God. We love you, God. We believe what you did on, on the cross for us, God. We believe that on this day right now that we can at least say that. We believe you, God. We don't know everything, but we believe you, God. We believe in a resurrected power, God. We trust you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Today is a great day to believe that Jesus came, he died, he was resurrected, and he's available for a relationship with you. As our deacons come, we invite you to share in this belief. Is there one that will come today? I am. You
You may not have all the answers. Even with that, Jesus is available. He's willing. I believe. is the way, the truth, and the life. Five one three one zero five nine. Now what? What's next? Jesus wants to establish a relationship with you. You hold my world in your hands. Nothing is impossible with God our Father. Today is a great day. You hold my world in your hands. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. I'm going to ask the tech team. We have a video playing in the background. Amen. Once we get that straightened out, in the meantime, just going to give our announcements in a brief manner. Amen. Pastor Red, that was a lot to chew on today. Amen. God bless you. Happy birthday to all of those celebrating birthdays this month. Happy anniversary. Hey, Jane, I see you waving. For those selling and celebrating anniversaries this month, happy anniversary. Amen. You said I do and you keep saying I do. That's a beautiful thing. Quickly, we will have two things this coming Saturday, April the 13th, from 11 to 1 p.m. We are going to have our Lunch and Learn session, um, our dementia workshop that's going to be presented by Dr. Paula Duran from the Universal Dementia Caregivers Organization. If you are interested in attending that session, uh, please see Sister Vicki Adams. If you have at least a little piece of paper, um, amen. 
She has a mind like a steel trap, but I'm going to ask that you not bombard her and just walk up to her and say, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, and expect her to remember. So if you would be so kind, please, ma'am, please, sir, just write your name on a piece of paper with April 13th. Put it in her hand so she can know to expect you. On that same day, the Esther group of our women's ministry will host our fellowship event, Cupcakes and Conversation. That's going to be taking place from 2 to 4 p.m. You can see Sister Linda Lovelady, Sister Rita Screws, or Sister Vicki Griffin for additional information. We will have... A matriarch ministry is sponsoring a hat and tie tea Saturday, May the 11th from 2 to 5. Tickets are $20. You can see one of the members of the matriarch ministry to secure your ticket. And we are in our church anniversary month celebrating 84 years. The L. Bethel Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. 84 years as a church. 20 years in this building as part of that celebration our assessments are $125 for adults young adults 18 through 25 $25 teenagers 13 through 17 $12.50 and children ages 12 and under $2.50 there's going to be a annual chili cook off amen the men's ministry secured the trophy last year. We're going to see who will be victorious in that vein this year. If you have not had an opportunity to give, you still can give electronically through Cash App, Zelle, Givelify, or you can see our trustee of the day in the corridor. Sister Jo Robinson is in the back holding up a basket. You may see her as you exit. Please, ma'am, please, sir, greet Pastor Red on your way out. Encourage him. Bless him as the Lord leads you. I'm going to ask you to, you know, quickly move like that so that the folks may greet you after we dismiss. Thank you to all who made this a great worship experience today. Again, to acknowledge our visitors, if you are not an official member of the El Bethel Church, you're visiting with us. Y'all keep trying to catch me slipping. Members keep waving at me. Amen. I know the glasses wasn't working all the way today, but I got that part. To those who are worshiping with us in sanctuary and in the virtual sanctuary, we are blessed and honored to have you worshiping with us. Amen. Always good to see our First Lady in service. Continue to keep her and our pastor in prayer as he is getting some rest and relaxation. Amen. Amen. We are so grateful for the both of them and their ministry. If there's nothing else to claim our attention, the word of God for the people of God, let the church say amen. Let the church say, God has spoken. Let the church say, Amen. Let the church say, Amen. May the best of God's blessings be upon you. May his peace, power, protection, provision, even his joy pursue you as you travel the path of life. May his favor fall upon you that your faith might increase, that wherever you go, you might know. Now what? What's next is that you would believe on Jesus and share that belief. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. God has 
focus. Let the church sing. Amen. So be it. I believe it. I receive it. Let the church.